kindly note that if you are under 18 or unsure about electronic stuff, do not proceed. I will bear no responsibilities if any damages occurred. Thank you. Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. And it's been a while, I've actually not created any video content. I do apologize to all my viewers and subscribers. Reason being is actually I have a very hectic and a busy work schedule. Now, I'd like to give a shout out to Rolly Jai coming from Canada and to Extreme Terminator. You've actually asked me the question on how I actually did this self crimping cable that allows me to connect to the standard ARGB connector based on the fan or based on the uh, ARGB strips to the uh, Unifan controller itself. Now, in this video, I will show you in details on how I did the crimping, the tools that I've used and the material. Let's get into it. The tools I'm going to use on this project itself is a simple cable cutter, a cable stripper, and a cable crimper. Now, this is actually a crimper that I normally use, which is actually the PA09 Engineering Crimper 2. Now, why is so special about this? Because I have total control on this tool itself. Now, some crimpers is thick, whereby they will crimp. Okay, let me just show you the pin outs here. Now, if you can see the pins over here, see there's an inner wing and outer wing, the V-shape. So these are the wings that bite your cable. So if you have dual, right, meaning to say it will crimp both wings together, but I choose to use single reason being I have more total control. Let me just show you. See, this crimp the uh, inner. And once I'm done with the inner, I'll go with the outer. So to have this right, I will not over crimp and cut the cables. Sometimes it does and it will just fall off. So I've actually total control on this. Now, the material itself that I'm using Basically, you will need to have a 3-pin uh, plug, or should I say the ST, uh, JST-03, okay, which looks like this. And of course, it comes with the pins. Now, normally I'll purchase in a set. As you can see here, see, it's in a set. I'll leave this in my description on where to actually get this. And also, you will need this. This is actually a standard ARGB um, tripping connector. Or should I say a splitter? This is actually 1 to 5. But do take note that don't go crazy on ARGBs whereby you connect 5 and connect to the uh, AR, I mean to the uh, Unifan control Unifan controller itself you need to take note on the voltage, which I'm going to explain to you later. And for this uh, exercise itself, right, I'm not going to cut this. But when you cut this, right, you will have three strands of cables. I'm just going to use this as an illustration on how I do the crimping. This is something very important, which I need to actually tell you guys to take precaution on. Do make sure that you know what's the uh, load capacity on this control unit itself or should I say the uni, uni controller. Now, I do have a video setting the do's and don'ts on this control unit. You can actually click on the top right-hand corner. I'll leave the uh, URL over there. Just in general, this unit itself, total, it can take up the ARGB load at 10.4 ampere. And each output here, one, two, three, four, is catered for 2.6 ampere. So before you connect anything to this outputs here, each and individual output, make sure you check the load of what you're connecting. For example, if you can actually do daisy chain on other fans, which have a standard connector, whereby you can actually do the uh, converter, all right, to connect to the Unifan controller, make sure you check the load. And on the specification itself for this Verda Evo, now, take a look at the LED drawn power. It's actually 0 0.2 ampere, the uh, LED power drawn or the ARGB power drawn. Now, I know that you can actually add more than 13, or should I say more than 12 fans into one output itself because this, each and individual output is actually rated as 2.6 ampere, but no point. Reason being, each output, right, is only catered for four fans, which is actually 
controllable by the uh, L Connect. If you were to actually launch the L Connect application that I shown you on the uh, top left hand corner, it's going to be four fans on each output. So just stick with four. So having to say this right, four fans. If I were to total up the uh, current of each fan, which is zero point two, is zero point eight. And 0 0.8 is below 2.6 ampere. It's good to go. This part is rather tricky because you will need to know how you actually do the uh, crimping, either this way or that way. Now, on this end, in fact, it's actually a standard ARGB connector. It's pretty straightforward. When you have a fan that is daisy chained to four fans, for example, and at the end, right, you will have such connection. And you will notice that there's a missing pin. So all you need to do is just to connect to the standard ARGB connector where you have a missing uh, hole here so it goes like that or you can base on the arrows over here now this is not a problem the problem comes to this end here how are you going to crimp this as you can see there's a hook here so are you going to crimp it this way or are you going to crimp it that way now these two diagrams here in fact are the zoom in on the connectors on your left is in fact the standard ARGB connector whereby you won't go wrong connecting it to it because there is a missing pin out or should I say missing hole here and there's a missing pin so it will just connect directly or you can actually follow the arrows and to connect them now the problem is actually on the other end how are you going to crimp this JS T03 connector don't get confused about this orientation I'm just showing you how it looks like from the top from the side and from the other end in fact I'll be focusing on this now just to tell you the polarity of all these pinouts here on the standard ARGB let me just move this to a side now over here there are three manuals that I've actually downloaded from the internet this is actually AS Rock this is actually an MSI motherboard and this is a Azutech motherboard now looking on the uh, Tai Chi port itself, or should I say the AS Rock Tai Chi. Now, if I'm to zoom right, then what we want is actually the three pin, which is actually the addressable ARGB. Now let me take you to the page itself, which I believe is actually 35. Okay, just take a look at the ARGB um, the ARGB legend here now as you can see there are three pins just take note that is ground is data in data out and voltage out which is actually 5 volt and the 5 volt is normally named as pin 1 so as you can see here right on the right hand side now this I do know is actually the ground this is actually the data and this is actually the vote out which is 5 volts so this is pin 1. Later on when I do the illustration, right, take note on pin 1, which I'm going to highlight this, which is pin 1, silver. I'll use a marker to actually highlight it so you can actually see what is actually going on. Now, on the MSI board itself, same thing. Now, MSI itself is known as J Rainbow 1. It's not ARGB. So let me just take you to that page, which is 42. Now, if you can see, same thing, three pin. So you have one and followed by the two pins. Now, one is actually the five volts, as you can see here. So this is pin one. Then come to the Asutec board. And it's actually here. Okay, this is addressable. Generation 2.1. In fact, it's known as the ARGB connector. So I'm going to take you to the page. 42. Now, the printout over here, see? The 5 volt is actually on pin 1. So I'm going to indicate over there. Now, on the other end, on the JST itself, JST 05, oh sorry, 03, I'm just going to blow this up. Now, as you can see, the connector itself, right? There is 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. In fact, it's an indication of telling you which pin is which pin. So I know that pin 1, in fact, is actually the plus 5 or 5 volts. 2 is actually data. 3 is actually ground. So right now, I'm going to take you back to my desk and to show you 
Oh, now just one pointer. I will also mark one pin one with a silver marker that is actually indicating it's actually five volt. Same goes to the other um, image, which is this. I will indicate this as five volt with a silver marker. Now, as mentioned earlier, the connectors here itself, I will do the markings right now. Now, if you can see the standard connector, now I do know that the first one, in fact, is actually the ground followed by data and followed by the positive. So with this, right, I'll do a marking. Normally, I'll do a marking at the other end. So I know that this is actually positive and I'll mark over here. And on the JST03, now, as mentioned to you, there are indicators over here. Okay, as you can see, one, two, and three. So on one, I will mark as silver. Then I'll start to do my crimping. Now, to do your crimping, make sure that your cable are straight. So I'll cut it off. Then following this, which is this. I'll start off with the plus five. So with the stripper itself, right, I'll just strip off the cable. Okay, there you have it. Now, for thin cables, right, normally I'll just bend. And for the pin itself, the cable is in fact, or should I say the wire is facing downwards and I will just flush it. Then I will use the crimping tool to crimp it. Okay, this is actually the first swing. And then I will crimp it. The first crimp is done. Okay, now on the second crimp, right, I will not just crimp it directly, I will just fold the uh, wing. Now, reason being what I'm doing right now, right, because how the crimping tool works is, in fact, assuming that this is actually the cable itself, the uh, wire, so what it does is actually when you crimp, right, it bites to the cable. So if you do bite it too hard, right, the cable at the end over here, might just break. So what I'm doing is actually I fold and then when the crimping does right it crimps over here so it will bite on the metal instead of the cable at the second end. So as you can see here so I fold in. So once I've actually done with the fold right I try to make it neat. Okay once it's actually done as you can see here, it's folded in. Then I will do the cream. And that's it. And you will not go anywhere. Then I will slot this, which is actually the 5 volt indicator over here. See if it's actually a 5 volt. Here, probably I should show you tracing from here. This is actually a 5 volt all the way to this. And this you will plug to pin 1, which is this, which I've actually indicated over here. I'll plug it in. So you know that this is actually positive. Then you continue on with the, the rest. I'll show you again. Okay, again, I will just strip it. It doesn't really matter, just strip it. Once done. Again, I'll fold it. This is thin, that's why I fold it. I can fold the uh, cable. If it's thick, right, then probably at this end here, okay, assuming that the uh, cable is thicker, you can't do the fold. You can't do the fold like this because the pin will not fit. So what you do is actually you bend this into half. 
to let it bite. Okay, there's a difference. So right now I'm just going to do it the way that I do. Reason being because this cable here is actually very thin. So I'll just feed the pin. Alright, see it goes in all the way as you can see. So I will just crimp it. Then the second part, which is actually the um, external wing, I'm just going to bend it. It take a bit. It takes a bit of practice. So once you have actually a nice fold, then you can crimp it. Done. Just say it again. Now I do know this is actually the center, so this is actually the data, and this is ground. So I'll just slot it in. See, it goes in nicely. Now some of you have actually asked me this question, or you might be asking me this question: How am I sure that you know when I plug into the control, the um, Unifan controller? How am I sure that this silver here? I mean this marking. Pin 1 is positive. Now, if you want to be sure about this, which I would encourage you to do so, is to dismantle this unit here. Now, to save time, in fact, I've actually unscrewed two screws. So, just to show you, now make sure that when you are doing this right, make sure that it's actually not power on. No cables are connected, things like that. And gently remove it. There's a trick to it, in fact. So when you're removing it, right, make sure that you remove it carefully. Okay, when you hook it up, take a look at the uh, readings over here. If you can see, right, if you can see carefully, there's a positive over here. There's a negative over here. So positive is plus 5. So if I were to trace this positive to here. See, this is plus 5, which I've actually indicated. So take a look at here, which I've indicated silver color, which is pin 1. is plus 5. Matching over the other end, this is a plus sign. So it's the correct way to connect it. In fact, in each connector, right, or should I say the uh, ARGB connector on the uni controller, there's a plus, there's a minus. So this is actually how you see it. The moment of truth, in fact, I've actually connected my uni controller to my PC, and this is actually lighting now. Now, on my L Connect itself, right, okay, as you can see here, I'm actually plugged to one and two. So one, I'm gonna let it as rainbow, and two, I will set it to static, which you will see in a short while. This is going to be in yellow. See? Or should I put it red? So this converters that I've actually created myself, it works. And as I mentioned to you on the um, set one, right? Or should I say the output one? I've actually set it to rainbow colors. Right now, I'm just going to unplug and just going to plug it in. See, this is rainbow color. So there you have it. How to actually crimp your own cables to connect to the uni controller. If you guys like my content, do remember to subscribe and to hit on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.